Molo Sambonani, hello, how's it? Good morning, good morning, good morning. It's Friday, yeah, bo. <laughs> you know what time it is. Every time it is a Friday, of course, we have a special feature, either a mumish of the week or a loser of the week or indeed a champ of the week. So hang around until the last segment to find out exactly what we have this week. If you love the show, remember, you can do me a solid favor. Hit that like button, please, whether you're watching the simulcast on Facebook or on YouTube. And if you're watching in YouTube in particular, well, then subscribe to the channel. My name is Sikhle Ngobese, a.k.a. Big Daddy Liberty. Welcome to it. This is Vuganazo, your morning news analysis show. You can find us on our website, of course. We do have a website at bigdaddyliberty.com if you want to support the show financially. Anything between 50 to 100 rand. On average, we do 75 rand per month from our fans. With that being said, enough of my jibber jabber. Let's get straight into the news. Okay, we begin with some good news. Indeed, a rare win for those of us who hold non-racial views. You know, the idea that society shouldn't be determined by the race or skin color of people. That government, for example, should not be picking winners and losers based on race. That's the exact same racism that the colonial government had. This is the exact same racism that the apartheid government has. And it's the exact same racism that today's African nationalist government, defined by the ANC, is employing. And it's that policy which unfortunately is so pervasive in the political elites in this country and the institutions of this country that it's hard to fight. Those of us who are non-racialists find it very difficult to fight this toxic idea. But nonetheless, there are a few registered wins. And in this instance, AfriForum notching up a very important victory against the Department of Tourism, against that racist equity fund that basically demanded that support for tourism businesses that were affected by the spicy cough and the government's lockdown would be contingent on them being 51% black owned. That is a racist policy. Indeed, BEE and affirmative action, generally speaking, as I hold, are racist policies. But nonetheless, the court's ruling in favor of AfriForum and Solidarity as such. Now, reading from their statement here, AfriForum and Solidarity may have managed to deal a final blow, they say, to the Department of Tourism's discriminatory tourism fund. This, after, this comes after the department had appealed after a 2021 Supreme Court of Appeals ruling in favor of AfriForum and Solidarity in terms of which the use of e Black Economic Empowerment, or BEE, as a criteria for granting relief from the Tourism Equity Fund was un lawful. In particular, let me quickly remind you here, as AfriForum writes in their statement, it was Tourism Minister Umama Loko Kubai Ngubani, the then Minister of Tourism, who introduced the Equity Fund in 2020 as an institution that would only allocate loans and grants to businesses with at least 51% black ownership. According to AfriForum and Solidarity, the allocation of relief funds on the basis of race is absolutely unreasonable. The Constitutional Court confirmed this today and declared the action of the department to be unlawful. End of quote. Yes, that's right. Solidarity and AfriForum are absolutely spot on. Indeed, I've always said this. We've got to slowly and surely as individuals, as organizations, as communities who believe in the principle of non-racialism, i.e. a society that doesn't judge people by the color of their skin, a society that doesn't apportion opportunity or pick winners and losers based on race. That is the kind of society that you want. I always say this on the show, that the values or the ideas, if you will, that I fight for is for a free, prosperous, non-racial, and property-owning society. That is how you build a functioning, functional liberal democracy in, a in an age like ours. So here's what I say. I tip my hat to organizations like AfriForum and Solidarity who are fighting this particular cause. They're not the only organizations, by the way, that believe in a non-racial South Africa. If this country is to work, then we need to abandon the race-based legislation and the racist laws, which, as I said, the colonialists used, the apartheid uh, administration used, and today's government is using. We need to abandon those laws and actually embrace a non-racial future where human beings are viewed as human beings, South Africans are viewed as South Africans, not as black, white, Indian, or colored. All right, I take you now to the administrative capital of KZN, that's Peter Maritzburg, of course, where a, a shocking story has effectively come out. Now, at some stage, we'll do a special 
on Peter Maritzburg. Indeed, we'll be doing a special on KZN broadly uh, to track the, dec the decay and the de decline of this once shining town in this province. But nonetheless, um, <clears throat> the story, as I said, out of uh, Copesville, which is around uh, Peter Maritzburg, where a gang has been terrorizing this particular community. And in one incident, literally broke into the house of a young woman who at the time was breastfeeding. The criminals then proceeded to wait for her to finish breastfeeding and then proceeded to rape the mother of this infant. An absolutely shocking and disgusting story written up, of course, in Times Live by journalist Nivashni Naya, who wrote this sad story up and um, basically detailed events as such. Now, these two armed robbers allegedly held a, a knife to an 18-year-old mother while she breastfed her newborn baby before raping her in her Peter Maritzburg home. Private security company MI7 said the men were ra later arrested on Sunday, thank God, for that, but nonetheless, it reads on to say that these men were part of a gang that allegedly went on a crime spree in Copesville on Friday and Saturday. Uh, on Friday, they allegedly forced their way into a property using crowbars, they assaulted the residents and robbed them of electronic items before fleeing on foot. End of quote. Now, as I said, this incident happened on a particular weekend on a Friday and Saturday with these men eventually being caught on Sunday, thanks of course to the efforts of this MI7 security company working in conjunction with the Mountain Rise police station. They swooped on these particular criminals, four of them being arrested, one of them even having a police dog bite his ass. <laughs> uh, shout out to that police dog, man. Shout out to that police dog. If it was a human being, I would have made it uh, champ of the week and it might even just uh, change my rules on that. But nonetheless, uh, these four men obviously now apprehended behind bars. But again, there is a broader issue here, and this is where I'll wrap up. There is a broader issue here that reminds me of why I say what I say to you guys on the show. That is, you are on your own, dear South African. You, the faith flag family and freedom type South African, the law-abiding, God-fearing and family-orientated South African are on your own. If you literally think the South African police service will be able to prevent crime, which is their mandate, by the way, then you're sorely mistaken. Our cops on a ground level, at a police station level, are simply under-resourced and poorly equipped to deal with the nature of crimes that we face in this country. And who under-equips them? Who under-resources them? Well, it begins at a political level with a certain asshat police minister and, of course, a management structure of the South African police force, which is simply inept, at times corrupt, and simply in competent in doing their jobs. We need a wholesale reform of the South African police service where we, and I mean wholesale, you get rid of the entire management structure of SAPs. You start from scratch. You only promote the best of the best, the most capable, the most skilled, the most competent. You engage in a massive campaign of retraining and re-resourcing and reskilling our ordinary members in blue who are on the ground and again an even bigger campaign of upskilling our detectives indeed training more detectives so that the workload of some of our hard-working detectives is decreased and they can actually put together solid cases which are then put forward to the prosecuting authority this is the kind of reform that is required in the south african police service and it is a reform you will never get for as long as the anc is still in government and worse yet a certain asshat of a police minister remains at the helm. Again, this story exemplifies just what happens and what the picture looks like at the ordinary ground level when there is a collapse and a poor SAPS service. All right, it is that favorite time of the show, of course, where we discuss who our champ of the week is or our momish of the week or loser or loser moment of the week. This week we have both in this instance, so let's begin with our champ 
of the week. Our champ this week is the chairperson of the Parliament Portfolio Committee on Tourism, Utandi Mahambe Khala. That's right, Tandi Mahambe Khala, as you'll know from yesterday's Vuganaz episode, challenged the Minister of Tourism, Ulindiwe Susulu, directly on that shady 1 billion rand Tottenham Hotspur deal. Now, unaccustomed as I am to calling any politician, let alone an ANC politician, a champ of the week, and even mindful of the fact that it's a rather low bar to call someone a champ for simply them doing their job. I must say a little bit of kudos to Tandi Mahamehala on this particular issue because she did take the minister on and call her out for the shady deal. But even as I say that, a reminder to you that hashtag politicians are trash. <laughs> I'm still on message. Anyway, we also have a Mumish of the week. Who is our Mumish this week? Why, of course, the prima donna minister of tourism, Ulindiwe Susulu, our mumish of the week. What a mumish she is. Indeed, already under fire for this one billion rand shady Tottenham Hotspur deal that her entity, the SA Tourism, is engaging on and doubling down on with that loser of a CEO. Remember that character also. But nonetheless, uh, showing a complete disrespect not only for South Africans, but also the Portfolio Committee Parliament, which is meant to hold her to account, appearing late at that meeting that she was meant to attend at 9 a.m., rocking up at 1 p.m., waltzing in rather late and disrupting that meeting, and then proceeding to enter into a, a spat, a, a to and fro with that bout that we had a, a play on yesterday with, in the one corner, Utandi Mahambe Khala, and of course in the other, Lindiwe Susulu. Lindiwe Susulu shows a complete contempt for you, the South African, because if anything, her leadership on this matter should have seen her tackle the SA tourism entity directly and say, no, don't spend this money on a foreign soccer team. Spend it on upgrading local tourism attractions. Spend it on actually the SA tourism entrepreneurs in this country who after the lockdown were reeling and indeed in this poor economy are still struggling. A billion rand would have gone much farther there than in funding some soccer team hoping it will bring tourists. That, dear viewer, is a mumish of the week. All right, that's it for this week's episode of Vuganazo. If you like how I begin your news day, then visit our friends over at dailyfriend.co.za. They come to you Mondays to Thursday live at 1.30 p.m. They'll help you wrap up your news day. With that being said, on your way out, please hit the like button. And if you're watching on YouTube in particular, help me reach my goal of 50,000 subscribers by the end of the year. Subscribe to the channel, the Big Daddy Liberty channel, and become a part of the BDL Club. How do you do that? By supporting the show financially. You can do that by finding a payment method that suits you on our website at BigDaddyLiberty.com. With that being said... Have happy weekend, excuse me, and good Shabbos. And I'll see you on Sunday 8 p.m. for Liberty and Friends, where I'll have the Friends panel wrap up this news week. If not, I'll see you next week Monday, bright and early, for Vuganazo.